Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In regards to today's video, we're actually gonna be taking it back to the House of Commons for question period today, as this is the first week back since our two week break. Now for the past few days, it has been pretty heated, but in particular today, Trudeau and Pierre go back and forth and Pierre actually calls out Trudeau in regards to having an emergency meeting with the premiers that have been asking for it. Common sense conservatives will axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget and stop the crime. This prime minister is not worth the cost. Indeed, his carbon tax, which the parliamentary budget officer has proven, costs 60% of Canadians more than they get back in rebates, is now opposed by 70% of Canadians. Everybody understands that the tax is driving people to the food bank. That's why six premiers, including the Liberal Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, have asked for a meeting. Will he agree to a televised carbon tax conference if he's so sure of himself on this issue? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. The Parliamentary Budget Officer has confirmed that 8 out of 10 families across the country get more money with the Canada Carbon Rebate uh, attached to the price on pollution than it costs them. That's $1,800 arriving for a family of four in Alberta. It's thousands of dollars right across the country. These are things that are helping people with the high cost of living and groceries at the same time as we fight climate change. But Mr. Speaker, uh, what would be also helpful is if we were able to deliver the doubling of the rural top-up to put hundreds of dollars in the pocket of Canadians, but the Conservative Party is blocking the legislation to double the rural top-up. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, that is mathematically impossible that given that the NDP Liberal government has a combined majority and can pass That's anything right. it wants, which is exactly why we're in such a mess today yeah. as a country. After eight years, this NDP Liberal Prime Minister is not worth the cost, and that's why the Parliamentary Budget Officer confirms 60% of Canadians are paying more in carbon taxes than getting back in rebates. But why doesn't the Prime Minister, if he believes the contrary, why doesn't he have the courage to sit down in a televised and open forum and have a carbon tax conference with the Premier? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. We did sit down with the Premiers eight years ago and established the Pan-Canadian Framework on Climate Change that both puts a price on pollution and puts more out of 8 of 10 Canadian families in the jurisdictions where the federal backstop applies. That is a way of both fighting climate change and helping with affordability. Now, not only are the Conservative Party uh, counting on pulling away, taking away those Canada carbon rebate checks, uh, they're arriving this coming Monday on April 15th. People will see in their bank accounts the Canada carbon rebate that puts more money in their pockets ahead of uh, the costs associated with fighting climate change. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, he met the Premiers in 2016. Since that time, he's broken the promise he made them. He said the tax would only go up to 11 cents a litre. Now, he admits it will go up to 61 cents a litre. He said the tax would make people better off. Now we have the Parliamentary Budget Officer's report, which confirms 60% of Canadians pay more than they get back. The Prime Minister said, and I quote in 2015, Canadians need a PM who will meet with the Premiers. What happened? <laughs> now before we get back to Trudeau and his terrible answer to this question, as Pierre states, uh, the NDP Liberal have the majority of the votes. They can pass pretty much whatever they want, even though the Conservatives can put up a fight. And we saw that with the Conservatives putting forward the vote to call an early election, and the NDP, the Bloc, the Greens, some independents, and the Liberals all voting against it. So the Conservatives have some power, but not as much as Trudeau's trying to make it sound like. But on the second half of what Pierre was talking about, this uh, tweet that Trudeau put out where he said Canadians need a, a prime minister who will meet with the premiers. Now, I actually found that tweet, as you can see here, 
This is from January 29th, 2015, and he says, Canadians need a prime minister who will meet with the premiers and forge a smart economic plan for all Canadians in every sector of the region. Yet, in yesterday's video, and now in today's video, he continues to say, oh, well, I met with them in 2016, so, you know, I don't have to do it again, basically. And this is coming from the guy who, back in 2015, in November, created this letter to the Canadian people saying that he was committed to set a higher bar for openness and transparency in Ottawa, as well as saying, I am committed to leading an open, honest government that is accountable to Canadians, lives up to the highest ethical standards, brings our country together, and applies the utmost care and prudence in handling the public funds, which we've seen is pure bullshit because that hasn't been the case. And then we have the open and accountable government in 2015. Now, this tweet that he made was back in January of 2015. And then this whole website and, and whatever this government issued thing is, even his letter, this was all done in November of that same year. And this is the hypocrisy we see with Trudeau because he has been everything but honest and transparent with the people, seeing as we've seen so many scandals that are coming out and corruption that's throughout his government. But let's listen to what he has to say to Pierre here. The right honorable prime minister. While the conservative leader continues with his misinformation and disinformation, the reality is the parliamentary budget, budget officer uh, said that eight out of 10 Canadians do better with our price on pollution and the Canada carbon rebate. But speaking of misinformation and disinformation, any responsible leader uh, that receives an endorsement and support from proven conspiracy theorist and liar Alex Jones would have immediately denounced that. But that's not what the leader of the opposition did. He did absolutely nothing because those kinds of endorsements fit within his political strategy. Now, this is how we know that the Liberal government is grasping at any possible straw. Because just in yesterday's video, we showed how they're trying to circulate a gotcha video of Danielle Smith talking about the carbon pricing. And now he's trying to get uh, Pierre on this whole thing with Alex Jones, where Alex Jones has been following this guy for years and he's the real deal. Canada desperately needs a lot more leaders like him and so does the rest of the world. And he tweeted this on April 4th. Now, since this tweet, Alex Jones actually called out Trudeau and says, I love it. The man child who says he admires China's basic dictatorship is attacking me. And he played the video from today about Trudeau saying that, which is hilarious because they actually posted this on their <laughs> Liberal Party Twitter page, I guess, as some sort of gotcha again in, in regards to Pierre. But this is what uh, Alex Jones played in regards to Pierre when he was talking about how much he admires him. Justin Trudeau is not a liberal. It might surprise you to hear me say that. He's not a liberal. Liberals used to believe in liberty, and conservatives believed in, liber in conserving it. That was the common sense consensus we had in Canada. Justin Trudeau does not believe in liberty. He believes in government control. He wants to control your money. He wants to control your kids. He wants to control the economy, control your speech, control your bank account. Uh, he wants to control everything. That is illiberal. It's the opposite of liberalism. Um, I don't want to run your life. I want to run your government. And a government that does a few things well rather than a lot of things poorly. A government that minds its own business and lets people live their lives. And you know what? Not only does Alex Jones agree with this, 70 to 80% of Canadians also agree with this. This is how government should be run. Small, not big, not have the reach over everybody in your pockets, all that stuff. And I find it very hypocritical that Justin here wants to talk about Pierre being endorsed by Alex Jones and a while back he was talking about Tucker Carlson when this guy invited a Nazi into the House of Commons. He's, he goes to Klaus Schwab, does everything with the WEF. 
He's got some sort of connection with scandal after scandal. He's talked about admiring China for their dictatorship. Like, this man has no place to talk about any of this. And there was actually a speech in the Senate today by one of the conservative senators that we've seen on the channel before, Don Plett, who for about an hour just ripped into Trudeau and how his legacy would be a legacy of scandals. I have a few words to say today on the speech from the throne and in particular Justin Trudeau's legacy, his legacy of scandals. Colleagues, we are now in the ninth year of Justin Trudeau's reign in power. While it will be up to historians to write some years from now what exactly should be remembered about him, I would like to take the opportunity to outline just a few highlights of the Prime Minister's legacy. Historically, the Liberal Party of Canada has always fostered a culture of nepotism and corruption. But the Trudeau Liberals are a special breed of Liberals. First, they are totally incompetent. So there are many, many ethical breaches are a mix of goofiness, incompetence, and moral turpitude. The Trudeau Liberals are also special in their belief that whatever they do, even if it is unethical, is done for a higher cause. They truly believe they are above the law and that the ethics rules are only for mere mortals, not for them the great justice warriors. Let me quote Andrew Coyne, who wrote in the Globe and Mail last December. Liberals have always been prone to being corrupted by power, but the current crop of liberals are unique for being corrupted by their own virtue. The preening moral vanity that is a signature of the Trudeau liberals, the gratitude, as in the Pharisees' prayer, that they are not like other men, is not, alas, an act. They truly believe it to the point that they are literally incapable of conceiving of themselves doing wrong. It isn't only that they are surrounded by people like themselves. In other words, they are surrounded by people who think like them and whose first thought at all times is whatever it is they are thinking must be for the good. That was Andrew Coyne. That makes the Trudeau Liberals so inoculated to ethical breaches that they no longer even recognize him. Now, if you have about an hour to spare, I would highly suggest you go watch the rest of that video with Don. He does a fantastic job laying out everything. I'll leave the video in the description below like all the other sources. But yeah, that was just a small little portion of Don's speech. And he goes into different members of the liberal government, uh, all the scandals that they're a part of, the corruption. It, it gets deep. And it, it's just so unfortunate that we have all of this from the past nine years. And these guys are still able to hold positions and make all these rules for us. Now, as we get back into the question period from the House of Commons, you're going to see Melissa Lansman and Pierre ask questions to the Prime Minister again, but you're going to notice he's not the one answering, and that's because he actually got up and left. Mr. Speaker, uh, Mark Carney, uh, who is the next Liberal leader, is a fierce supporter of the carbon tax. He's been called carbon tax Carney in the past, and he is willing at least to defend his carbon tax views in front of the premiers. The Prime Minister is not. He's running for cover and hiding from Canadians, he's gone. refusing to defend his own policy decisions. If the Prime Minister is really so proud of his plan to hike the carbon tax to 61 cents a litre, why won't he listen to Mark Carney and have a big, open, televised carbon tax conference? Okay. 
Honorable Minister for Natural Resources. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's very interesting that the leader of the opposition seems so uh, so fond of Mark Carney these days, who actually, as you say, does believe in a price on pollution. Perhaps the leader of the opposition should listen to him. But it is important with respect to the premiers to know that the premiers have every right to submit a plan that actually meets the federal benchmark and put in place their own price on pollution. That is something that British Columbia has done. That is something that Quebec has done. Mr. Speaker, Premier Mo was actually here recently and, and testified before the committee. And what Premier Mo said is he looked at alternatives to the price on pollution and found every one of them to be too expensive. expensive. This from a guy who has no climate plan, no. The Honourable Member from Thornhill. Last week, the Prime Minister increased the carbon tax by 23% on Canadians, on gas, on groceries, on home heating. He's doubling down and defying 70% of Canadians and eight premiers who want him to axe the tax. Six of those premiers wrote the Prime Minister asking for a meeting to talk about his punishing carbon tax. Instead, the Prime Minister just shot down the idea because they already had a meeting eight years ago. Can the Prime Minister tell us how many premiers he met in 2016 that are still in power today. The Honourable Minister for Families and Social Development. Mr. Speaker, actions speak more than words. Our actions on this side of the House, over 750,000. When I asked the uh, Honourable Minister to start again, because the Chair sincerely could not hear uh, what the minister was saying. The Honourable Minister for Families, Children and Social Development. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As I said, actions speak louder than words. On this side of the House, our actions, over 750,000 families benefiting from affordable childcare spaces, over 100,000 new spaces across the country, 7 million children whose parents benefit from the Canada Child Benefit, a national school food policy. Their actions, Mr. Speaker, vote against funding to increase the number of spaces, vote against a national school food policy, Mr. Speaker. They've made it clear they're not there for Canadian families. The Honourable Member from Thornhill. Mr. Speaker, I don't know if she missed the question, but Canadians certainly missed the answer. It's zero. 2016 is the last time he had a meeting. Meeting Pokemon Go, dabbing, Harambe, that's what was popular in 2016. And you can get an apartment for half the price. Since the last time the Prime Minister had a meeting with the Premiers, gas and groceries have skyrocketed, and interest rates have increased 10 times over. So will he put aside his desperation and defiance, do some work around here, and meet the Premiers? Yeah. Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Innovation. Speaker, what Canadians will see today is one thing they will not hear from these Conservatives, Mr. Speaker, is the cost of inaction, the cost of forest fire, Mr. Speaker, the cost of flooding in our country, the cost of drought, Mr. Speaker. When each of these Conservatives are standing up, they're telling Canadians they have no plan, Mr. Speaker, to fight climate change. On this side of the House, we recognize, like all Canadians, we need to act to save the planet. We need to act on climate change. That's what we're going to invest in Canadian. That's what we're going to continue to invest to make sure that we have a planet to live for our children. Boy, oh boy, is it tough to listen to Champlain. The guy just really sounds like Kermit the Frog. But as you can see there, Justin wasn't around. He didn't have to answer any questions because he got up and left. However, in tomorrow's question period on Wednesdays, he has to be there. So we'll see how that goes. Well, anyways, this is just my take on the whole situation. I'd love to hear from you guys. Please let me know in the comment section below how you feel about this. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks so much.